Uh, everybody, welcome to the Battle Action Panel here at Enniskelly Comic Fest 2022. Ooh! Thank you. Now, um, I'm not going to make this about me. And there's a funny story about that. Um, <laughs> no, what we have here is four of the finest creators in the known universe, and in one case, the unknown universe. I'll leave you to decide which one of this that, that is. Um, we have... Dun, dun, dun. Drum roll, please. Thank you. First, we have a drum roll, and then we have the incredible, the incredible Mike Dory. <laughs> yeah. We have PJ or Paul Hogan or Paul J. <laughs> Garth Ennis. Yeah. <laughs> You notice I didn't say the incredible or whatever. He's getting all his accolades in a minute. And then we had the amazing Keith Burns. <laughs> These are four of the incredible creators who produced this wonderful battle action special from Rebellion. Now, those of you who don't know what battle is, <laughs> really are in the wrong pub. But um, battle was a comic that came out in 1975 before many of us were born. Not, not me, sadly, but... Um, battle was groundbreaking, um, and in 1976, kind of battle kind of kicked off a um, a hard uh, a hard line look at comics in a way with action uh, as a, as a kind of a um, an offspring. Action was action stories that were tough and dangerous and violent and fantastic. Um, <laughs> and they both both comics merged then after um, after a while. I think it was late 1977. And then we had Battle Action. And it was amazing. And a brilliant comic. And it was shepherded uh, mostly by a man called Dave Hunt, who I think deserves a round of applause. Yeah. <laughs> um, battle Action. Ba battle Beget Action. Action Beget 2000 AD. Without 2000 AD, I would be broke. So uh, thank you for that, Dave. And uh, Battle Action has been amazing, but it didn't get the same longevity that 2000 AD had. Uh, why? We don't know. But it was an amazing piece of work, some incredible stuff. And a couple of years ago, the decision was made that there would be a sort of a revival. There have been a few minor revivals, but this revival here, every story within was written by a man called Garth Ennis. Now, Garth is not only sitting over there, and tougher than me, um, is one of the most celebrated writers of our modern day, I think. Would everybody agree? Yes! Would we everybody not him. agree? We hate Thank him. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I don't want to shout out about everything that Garth has done, but he has done some incredible stuff over the years. But to my mind, this is one of his better works. It's just brilliant stuff. Works great. Um, I'm not just here just to to, uh, to butter him because I hope he might give me work one day. It is a great piece of work. It's uh, seven different stories, all hailing back to the old days of battle action with a bit of a modern twist. Garth, how did you modernise it? Um, I don't know about modernising it. I like to think that what I did was just focus on what was great about the original stories and try to bring that out. Um, I don't like that notion of modernizing things where you, you simply make it unrecognizable. You render it as different to the original as, as can be done. I'd, I'd, I'd just like to think that <clears throat> what I brought out was the good stuff about the old stuff. Yeah, no, because if we go through the stories here that were within the original, I made a list, we had Johnny Red. Of course, everybody loves Johnny Red. If you read Battle, started in issue 100 and went through right to the end. And I know people say that Charlie's War was one of the best things that Battle ever produced, and it was amazing. But I, given a choice, I would pick Johnny Red. Um, I don't know if I should say that out loud, but I preferred it. So wow. It's more of my sort of stuff. Bold choice. Yeah. Well, <laughs> hey, Pat's not here. He's not going to hurt me. Um, not anymore. Um, <laughs> we also had the Sarge. Now, I loved the Sarge and the original this version is even better then we have Crazy Keller some people would say that Crazy Keller was more important than Major Easy I don't know about that I think it was but um, Dredger of course came from Action Comic and that was a the hardline cop 
Um, it's like this, uh, what was his name? Uh, John Thomas Carter and the Sweeney. Um, that's a Regan, that's what his name. Regan yeah, and, yeah. And, and Carter. <coughs> oh, wait, they were presidential candidates. Um, Hellman of Hammer Force. Who was it who drew Hellman of Hammer Force down Mike Dory? I can't remember. No. It's some guy, <laughs> young guy, some genius. Um, Kids Rule OK, which came from action. Yeah. And then um, the final story in this battle special is something that should have happened, but didn't. Well, not things should have happened. Could have happened had battle gone on a little bit longer, maybe. Nina Petrova and the Angels of Death spun off from uh, Johnny Red. And uh, Nina was a secondary character. Very rare to have a female character in a war comic. Mm. And especially one who was actually not there to be rescued. Mm. So, uh, yeah. So what we have is seven fantastic stories and a couple of tie-ins to other tales. And uh, let's say, I want to pick um, PJ first. PJ, you, you drew the start. Yeah. Tell us about that then. I did. I, do I want talking. To go, I, do, I want to go back to what you were talking about, about modernising right. these things. I think, I think if you're doing them, you can't help but modernise them because you're not living in the 70s. You're not going... Yeah. They are going to come through your own eyes as you would do things now. And there are certain things and tropes and ideas and stuff that you're just going to dismiss. Not because you're thinking, I better update this. Make mm. sure it's, it's just... Because that's how we work now. That's how we do things now. So I mean, I, I there's definitely though in the artwork that I did for the the Sarge and the strip, I kind of deliberate sort of I, w I want it to be black and white. I want it to have that textural feel, yeah. which is is different than because they were printed on an old newsprint, and so there was a kind of texture to them even whenever the intent was pure black and white. There was always a texture in the newsprint, so I was kind of introducing sort of texture, like thumbprinty texture. Yeah. So that was kind of, I suppose that's the closest thing to sort of modernising it was, but at the same time I was just trying to keep it, the, the soul of what that book was as, as I remember it anyway. Yeah. So yeah, so I mean it was great, great fun to do. It feels very like um, the, the sword strip as, as is in the book is very much here are all the players and yeah. we would like to bring, you know, we'd like to do the next one. I think, you know, it's here, here, here are what these characters like, here's the fundamentals of these characters. I think we'd... Uh, I think, there are, over the course of the, the life of the strip, there are lots of characters flow in and out. It's uh, one of the distinguishing features of the Sarge is lots of characters would just die. Yeah. They would just go, you know. You'd have a character, you think, I really like that character. Oh, no, he's dead now. Um, and I think, I think Garth, kind of, you, you selected specific characters that you wanted in. in yeah, the, there's a particular work. point in the Mike Western, Jerry Finley Day run that that, that, that slots into mm. when, you know, some guys have died and been replaced. Some guys are about to die, but that's just at that moment where there's those eight or nine yeah. people right there. That I mean, it's, it's actually reading that strip is where I learned to create a likable cast and then knock them off one by one <laughs> for, for maximum emotional payoff. Yeah, yeah. Uh, because I can remember reading that as a kid and thinking, God, I really liked him. And oh, there he goes. <laughs> yeah. There was one episode I recall. Um, it's the one with the Mick McMahon cover where the smoking grenades will damage your health. <laughs> where two of the section go at once yeah. and it's like bloody hell jerry feeling a bit <laughs> bloodthirsty that way <laughs> yeah. yeah it's interesting how fast you can emotion i mean i think british comics have always done this really well when they work really well in a very short space of time you can emotionally connect with it mm. a character with just just by delivering the smallest amounts of nuance and in the characterization and, and leaving a lot to the reader to fill in that i mean american comics maybe because um, they're, they're, you know, they're 20 pages, it's luxurious, you can, you can fill in every single gap then, you can tell every single piece, mm. whereas you can't do that in, in British comics, exactly. but you do find yourself kind of instantly liking the characters and feeling sort of connected to these characters very quickly, and then, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't remember, I don't want to spoil it, I don't think anyone dies in I can't remember. It was drawn, yeah, to, it was, it was, yeah, it was drawn, it was drawn two years ago, so in my defence, I can't remember. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I read it two days ago and I can't remember. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> made a big impression. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, well, I want to go to um, to Keith down the end. Hello, Keith. How are you? Yay. Um, you haven't drawn a lot of comics in your time. Mm. Not a huge man. Not say compared to PJ, for example. Yeah. But what you you've done some incredible work on Johnny Red because we are great. Well, we know you're great at the machinery and the har the hardware. Uh, how hard a taskmaster is Garth when it comes to making sure the hardware is correct? 
Um, <laughs> that's, very, very that's, not, that's not fair, because you naturally would draw that stuff right anyway. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, yeah. So, so it's okay, much harder unfair. for me, sorry who's a much yeah. more wonky, doesn't know what he's doing with the vehicles. <laughs> that, that, that's a hard taskmaster then, but for you, it's like easy, surely. Yeah, yeah, it's kind of the stuff that I was always interested in, so it came really easily. Um, and I always used models um, as reference. So once you've got all the information right in front of you, you can't really go wrong. Mm. Yeah. But it, the tricky stuff was trying to figure out how you fit that into the storytelling. So you know, trying to capture the kind of physicality of flight and the kinetic energy and <coughs> what happens when one plane's chasing another and yeah. how they both trail after each other and then what happens when a plane blows up. So it's all very specific nerdy stuff that you've got to get into. Of course, if you were do, if you were writing or drawing a science fiction story, you can tweak that to fit the story. Yeah, but in yeah. reality, the story has to be has to fit the facts with this uh, with a war tale. Yeah, yeah. But so, sometimes you you are. I mean, I, I go in uh, some of the stuff I've done with guard. Sometimes there is a moment where it is a kind of I'm showing off the weaponry here. I'm showing off the equipment, and mm. you know, it's it's about the character and stuff. But let's have a look at this gun. Let's have a look at the weight of it and the feel of it. Yeah, and, you know what these guys were carrying. You know, it's yeah. not just you think about war movies and you think there is some stuff where they're just showing you how great that aeroplane mm. looks how great that tank yeah. looks yeah mm -hmm. i do remember one specific point and johnny redward i'd kind of been working on them for quite a while issue i think it's probably about five issues in this is on the old strip that we yeah, on the, yeah, on the, yeah the one for yeah. titan yeah yeah and I, well, I had been panicking about following people like you know john cooper and joe calhoun that kept me awake for quite a while. <laughs> but then once I'd kind of, you know, studied the characters, then I thought, well, I'll just have to do my own kind of version of it. And I hadn't had any comments back from Garth, so I was, I was doing all right with the aircraft. And I got to one point where uh, Johnny had to, <laughs> he, he pulled up under a tree to hide the hurricane. Oh, that's right. And, yeah. then he, and then he stepped out and, you know, I did it all as I usually do it, and then sent it off and got this note from Garth saying, I think you're fine, that looks a bit like a, the nose looks a bit more like a Mark One hurricane than it's supposed to be a Mark II <laughs> hurricane. If you have this stuff in your head, you can't escape it. You can't escape it. It's like going a bit Mark One. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And I had to just go, yep, yeah, fair enough. Mm. Yeah, but, but I mean, you're, enough, uh, yeah. you're a member of the Guild of Aviation Artists. So you fact, better get this right. I'll in fact, you, you won the star prize one year, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so, like, this this is sort of meat and drink to you, really. Yeah, and, yeah. you know, they'll if you don't want them descending on you. Mm. Oh, yeah, because yeah, they're, they're, they're vicious. Mm. Yeah. Um, I was going to go to you, Mike, but we've got... No, no, it's all right. We'll put it on the yeah, side of Yeah, we'll yeah. tell you it off, yeah. <laughs> so, Mike... Um, because you, you, you do the helmet of Hammer Force. Uh, I'm going to spoil it because if, if anybody hasn't read it, it's, it's Helmet of Hammer Force, which is basically Helmet versus Glory Rider. Yep. Now, Glory Rider was a stripping battle that I absolutely love. And it's one of those. Um, it basically, the, 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 the Mr. Rider, I can't remember his, his rank in, in the comic, he's, um, he's harking back to his ancestry, uh, who were basically Civil War enthusiasts. Yeah. He thinks that he can get honor for his family by by basically by sending all his men to die um and then you have him versus Hamma, who is honorable but even though even though he's a german he's it honorable was. yeah so mm -hmm. how, when you were writing um are we were drawing uh Hamma back in in action in 19 hang on what year was it 1976 something. 14th of february 1976 yeah. and mike a, drew the very very first Hamma of Hamma for us in action yeah yeah and here we are now uh, Don't say 14 years something years, years later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Some years later. Just a few years later, yeah. yeah. So is it, is it fun to go back to again? Yeah, it really was. Yes, uh, I always liked drawing it. And I based him on uh, Robert Shaw in uh, Battle of the Bulge. And uh, when I realised I was going to draw it again, I rewatched Battle of the Bulge movie oh, to, to refresh my yeah. memory of him. And uh, so he's based on that character in that really good film. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I really enjoy it. I love drawing him anyway. Yeah. But it's a big thing at the time, in fact, during a German hero, it just wasn't... Yeah, it was, wasn't I mean, that thing. was one of the most controversial things at the time, but yeah. it actually... I mean, even before the violence of stories like Kids Will Okay, people went, no, you can't have a German guy who's a hero. I go, no, you can in Germany. No, but he, he didn't kill any British troops, so it was all right. So he just killed the Russians. So. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was all right. Yeah, it, it, was, it, was, it, was a, it was a big thing. I mean, I remember I was 10, or thereabouts, or nearly 10 when it came out, and... We were playing, you know, you'd read a comic and you'd play it in the playground and 
everybody wants to be Hellman. Uh, was, good, in good. the pre prior to action, nobody wants to be the Germans. It was always the weak kids who were the Germans. But it was me, basically. But, yeah. <laughs> and uh, and all of a sudden, he was the hero because he was cool. He was noble. And, yeah. uh, and also, he had a tank. And I think, you know, <laughs> I mean, having a tank, I mean, that's, that's automatically several cool points. So, uh, if we, Gareth, if I can ask you, if you, um, if you were to do another one of, of this same type, yeah. would you choose the same characters or do you have others in mind that you um, might want to pick? I would write some of the same characters, but I'd like to bring other writers in. Yeah. Uh, out of <laughs> uh, uh, that's all film, yes. Uh, <laughs> it's a slow, build I'm up afraid this. you're a bit slow off the mark. Damn it! Um, it's Rob Williams again, isn't it? He gets there, all the jobs. There, there have. I mean, I'm not giving anything away because John Wagner said this on his 2000 AD mm -hmm. interview recently for the 45th anniversary. He said he would write HMS Nightshade, oh. which would be fantastic. Yeah. Uh, but I'd like, you know, I'd like to do more. Um, I would probably write some of the same characters and then bring other writers in to handle yeah. others um but you know if we can make this an annual or a semi-annual thing i would love that yeah well is there anybody you think you would consider to, a character you consider to be out of out of bounds i mean like would you do charlie's war story no with no, Pat, because it's it's sacred yeah. ground. With Pat offered to do a star a Charlie's War story. Oh yeah, that, that's something yeah. else. But I mean, yeah. you know, we we've seen Charlie's War without Pat, and it doesn't it work. work. Yeah. yeah, unfortunately, yeah, uh, it looks yeah. good, but yeah. it doesn't work. Yeah. Um, and it is sacred ground. I mean, to me, it's the most important British comic strip ever. Possibly the most important comic <laughs> strip ever. It's yeah. that good. Um, but if Pat wanted to do something, and we could find him the artist he wanted, you know, some sort of coda. Yeah. to the thing yeah that would be wonderful um i would probably i mean there are there are characters and strips i i don't like but just be, that doesn't really matter because if someone comes along and has not they have an interesting take yeah. you know and it would also be really interesting uh now i'm in touch with alan hebden um but uh, Jerry Finley Day is famously reclusive. I uh, I tried to reach out to Chris Louder, yeah. aka Jack Adrian, never heard back from him. But you know, if guys like that wanted to get in touch and yeah. maybe do something, that would that would be interesting too. Be something, all right. Yeah. Um, do you do you think it's going to be harder to find some of the original artists for, for these? I mean, Mike's here obviously with us, so <laughs> that's good. Well, well sadly, <laughs> yes, yeah. yes, it is. I mean, you know, look at Johnny Red. Um, uh, Joe Calhoun and John Cooper are yeah. gone. Carlos Pino is still kicking about. Yeah. Um, but, you know, Eric Bradbury has gone. Pre Mike Western. Mike Western. Cam is sadly yeah. currently not yeah. drawing. Um, it is tough in that regard. Yeah. You know, you, you have to sort of, in a sense, you have to go with what you've got. Mm. Did Chris Lauder write for Battle? Um, I don't know about Battle, but he did, he did write Kids he, Rule OK yeah, for he action. Wrote, he did yeah. Tornado, the Victor Drago thing. Like That's right. That, yeah. Yeah. right. He, he, did, he did some Battle. Yeah. Did he? he? Did battle, yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he was around and about. So it would be interesting to bring guys like that in, if they're interested. I mean, I know Jerry Finley Day did a Road Trooper strip about yeah. 10 years ago. Did, yeah. uh, I mean, seeing him write the Sarge again would be yeah. interesting, but he just doesn't seem... Yeah. keen um, but you know however it works out if if we can keep this thing going uh, you know I, I'd love to love to Excellent. What, what about the artists would you like would you continue on if you were asked no forget it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> horrible <laughs> experience <laughs> terrible what despise to work with? Yeah, you can tell us you're in, you're in safe company well, yeah, I, tell I, us. I, I don't know because yeah, I, I know the tanks really well but I felt really sorry for PJ because he had to do a thing with Matilda tanks in it yeah, yeah. So and they're really difficult to draw. And I know it's Garth is a real stickler for accuracy. I'm no. bloody glad I didn't have to I'm lucky that. that I know how to use 3D software and keep my hands <laughs> on innumerable numbers of tanks from World of Tanks. They sent, uh, we did World of Tanks and they sent me the 3D models of the tanks oh, really? for, right. for the strip. So yeah. there's quite a lot of that <laughs> being used. Oh, and that's like drop it into the page that you're drawing. Oh, yeah, right. Press a button and it does this outline like you're a pencil You're spoiling it, you're spoiling no, it. I'd, I'd send a page off to Garth and Garth emailed back, those tanks look perfect. Just yeah. 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 change them, they look perfect. I hadn't drawn a line. Not a line of it was mine. I mean, you go over it and then you make them all bumpy and ragged and yeah. them through the war. But you, you should keep quiet. I know, I know. I, know. I thought they were good. <laughs> <laughs> you had to look at them again. 
So Keith, would you, if you got a chance, would you pick out, would you go back to Johnny Red if you had a choice of characters to draw from battle, or stories to draw from battle? Yeah, I it, it just love drawing, and all the characters, and the, you know, the cast, as yeah. well as Johnny, yeah. they're just great. Yeah, this works really well. Yeah. It's, it's worked well. But because, it, it does, again, I'm going to spoil a little bit, but those who haven't read it, um, it's Johnny Red versus Screamer of the Stukas. And Screamer was just one of the maddest characters that yeah, Battle yeah. had. Be- well, before uh, Baron Ironblood or whatever his name was from Action Force, he was one of the maddest villains. And I loved him. But um, to see them working together, it makes so much sense. And then you go, surely they met before. But they don't think they yeah. ever did, though. There's never a cross paths. No, I think yeah. the only battle crossover was the uh, Rat Pack Major, Major Easy, Easy one yeah. that uh, Alan Hebden and Carlos Escara yeah. did. But it just just like Hellman and Glory Rider, it just seems such an obvious yeah, thing. It makes, to it do. makes sense now, yeah. The aviation characters and the armor characters. Um, Screamer is it, it lasted fifteen episodes. Yeah. Um, I, I don't think it was intended to last much longer. Yeah. But he is a he is a tremendous villain. He is yeah. great. The trouble with the strip and Jerry Finley Day had a had a bit of a problem with this. He would write far better villains than heroes. So the hero of Screamer of the Stokers, Otto Screamer, is just a complete bastard. Yeah. And he looks brilliant. He looks he's almost like a personification of the Stoker itself. He looks like yeah, some bird of prey, of, yeah. some mm-hmm. looming Nosferatu-like <laughs> monster. Um, and the hero is this irritating little shit called Jimmy Fletcher, <laughs> who is, you know, is out to kill Screamer for, for having killed his dad. And you're like, I don't want to know about you. I want to know about, <laughs> about this, about Otto yeah, Screamer. Yeah, you get like that? It's much yeah. more interesting. Yeah. yeah. And uh, he really is a tremendous character, and it just seemed like the obvious thing to do. And it's the same thing with Glory Rider, because that's a good idea in a way it's like a sort of take on cadman the fighting card you know yeah. he he constantly um achieves personal glorification the one guy who know who's onto him and knows his knows he's a wrong one, yeah, yeah. Is, yeah. you know is always trying to undermine him but it never works out yeah. and that's steve hiltz yeah, that's right, you know yeah. who Hellman meets in the strip. Yeah, but that the exchange. Oh, we're well, spoiling too much. The exchange between Hellman and Hills makes perfect sense when you know the background of the stories. It's, it's it works brilliantly. Yeah, it's, it's, it's so well done. The thing is, I never knew about Glory Rider because I did Hellman, and I, until I, I got the strips, I had to look up who Glory Rider was. I didn't go yeah. clear. He's like General Patton, isn't he? Really? Yes, yeah, yes, he's, yes, he's yes, like exactly. he's like the sort of yeah. maniacal version yeah, of he, Patton. He's a good character. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's a good story. Yeah. And again, far more interesting than Hiltz. Yeah. yeah, you know yeah, the, yeah. the bad guy is far more interesting than the good guy. Um, Ryder, Ryder is one of those characters that you, you sort of want to see more of. Yeah, yeah. But he fits perfectly in with Hellman, and the, the conversation between Hellman and Hiltz, where Hellman gives Hiltz a piece of advice that I won't give away, really comes from that whole notion of the good German character in those strips, you know, uh, you did a couple more in Warlord, Mike, you know, yeah, uh, yeah. you did uh, Kampfgrip Falcon and, and uh, uh, Wall- oh, that, Aaron Arnie, Arnie, the Junkers 52 yeah. pilot. Um, and it's, it's this idea that there's a sort of noble German who fights for his country and not, yeah, he's not the he's regime. Not Nazi, yeah. And you know, this stretches credibility to a certain point. <laughs> and, and to find my way around that, I had to make Hellman a sort of decent but ruthless idealist in a way yeah, yeah. you know the guy who comes along and says look the way to solve your problem is to do one terrible thing yeah uh which i, I did something similar in the one we did for the action special yeah, yeah, yeah. um but the stuff that jerry was doing you know where he would go to incredible lengths to avoid killing british soldiers right, for instance yeah, yeah. like constantly giving people a chance <laughs> to surrender <laughs> stuff. And you're just thinking this this is sheer contrivance. It's at the <laughs> end of the old strip when you're drawing Hellman on the Russian front. Yeah. And it's, it's no holds barred all yeah, of a sudden yeah, and it's yeah, death camps and not genocide and, and it's <laughs> but it's it's essentially yes, these are two these are two peoples hacking each other mm. to death and all of a sudden Hellman makes a lot more sense. Yeah, mm. I mean Jerry must have a little trouble writing those script, the early ones where he couldn't kill anybody. Right. And he had to do all sorts of ways that he wouldn't avoid actually killing anyone. Mm. Right. Using all sorts of odd weapons and stuff. But it's uh, no once he got on the Russian front it made a lot more sense. Yeah. So, so in general, with with um, with with the special, is this is this how you would might imagine battle action might have become had it carried on? 
because obviously it, it, um, it was diluted a little with the old Action Force things, and tying with the toys and Storm Force and, and so on. And uh, even while there was still a lot of brilliant stuff in there, it didn't, um, it didn't have the same sting as it did back in around, you know, issues 1 to 400, that sort of, 1 to 400 was kind of a really mm. good, solid era. If it carried on from there, is this where we might have ended up? Because I know 2000 AD aged up with the readers. This is slightly older now than it is slightly older than Battle was at the time. I mean, there's the B word appears in there. Bastard. A bastard, oh God. Does it? I'm so sorry. I think someone <laughs> says shite as well. But, <laughs> but steady, steady, oh, steady on. <laughs> Crikey. Can we bleep this? Sorry. <laughs> um, it's, it's hard to say because the thing is about Battle, Battle Action, is it was a World War II comic. And yes, they had Fighting Man. And yeah. yes, they had Charlie's World, but it was essentially a World War II comic. And as you make your way up out of the 70s into the 80s, people start to lose interest in that. And even before the Action Force stuff, I don't know if you remember, they tried to kind of reinvent Battle as a sort of ah, more sort of general yeah. entertainment oriented comic they had the fist of jimmy chang which was a kung fu strip and they yeah, had course, truck yeah. turpin yeah. and jet blade and these things were just sort of slowly trying to push yeah. the war stuff out um with charlie's war and johnny red still forming the backbone of the comic but the trouble is these strips aren't that great and they don't work yeah. and battle starting to lose its way so that and then you get the action force stuff coming in and at that point it becomes a different comic really yeah. with just a couple of the original strips left and it's really really hard to imagine battle surviving like unless it unless it could somehow have morphed into a more modern war comic yeah. maybe like crisis or but, something but like the, that the weird thing is commando kept going through all that period sure. commando still going and sure. it's almost identical but they you know what they have on their side is they have this this massive backlist so half their output can yeah. be reprints yeah. and as well as mm -hmm. that they don't so, frankly pay very yeah, well yeah. uh so they can just keep knocking this stuff yeah. out battle has the problem that you need seven strips yeah, every it's expensive week expensive yeah. um if it could somehow have morphed into a crisis like political comic but not too political because crisis had its own problems mm. maybe there was a way it could have survived but i don't know it, it seems like it seems to me that there's something inevitable about its demise Okay. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's a it's a, a tragic end, but uh, what we got was glorious while it was there. I mean, it ran for what fourteen years or something, and it was. I mean, it wasn't always brilliant, but then nothing that runs for that long is always brilliant. While it was good, it was it was amazing stuff. Yeah, there. I mean, it's, funny, it's always Second World War, though, isn't it? You know, all the wars we've had since then. Yeah, the like Korean War and the Vietnam War and Afghanistan, all these places. Yeah. There's always like commandos, nearly always Second World War. That's true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. So very much. Charlie Wars. Charlie War was First World War. Cadman was First World War. Mm. But nearly always Second World War. Mm. Nazis make good villains. That's the thing. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's it. That's true. And the good, yeah, the good story needs a good villain. Yeah. 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 And the stakes are very, very high, mm. and there is an apparent moral component to the thing that is actually highly compromised if you look at it yeah. in more detail. But there's no doubt that the end result of that war is better than its alternative absolutely yeah. um uh, and you know let's face it the hardware looks good <laughs> <laughs> yeah, does, yeah. there's a lot of sense to one. Coming because it right. is a world I, war it's a, a global yeah. war yeah you're absolutely yeah, so there's right there's lots of locations and lots of different kind yeah. of conflicts there's not it's not just limited to you True. know an iraq war story would always be in a desert would always yeah be uh, plus, battles uh, uh, yeah, kind of yeah we've seen the war like an iraq war has the uh advantage that we're not entirely sure who the good guys might yeah. be and yeah. um and i don't think that's too close to to the present time though of course that's the thing when battle started in 1975 it was 30 years after the end of the second world war we're now more than 30 years after the end of the last issue of battle so mm. more time has gone now than as that week which is good but nevertheless the stories still have a sting and not just not just these ones but some of the original ones still yeah. work now a good story it, it is effectively timeless and there was some amazing stuff back in back in the day and uh yeah of course not, not all of it worked but if you look at and we know we know disrespect to dc thompson's output they did an awful lot of war stories that we don't remember at all mm. right and is it because that we're not championing them or because they just weren't worth they Thank didn't you. have Pat Mills and John Wagner. Okay. Oh, we're getting to them again. Those it, two. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, Warlord went so far mm. 
But Warlord's best writer was probably Jerry Finley Day, and Jerry's good, but he's not Pat and he's not John. Okay. They they were the quantum leap. Yeah. You know, I sometimes think of them as our Lee and Kirby. Oh yeah. yeah the yeah. guys who come along and say, right, it's gonna be like this from now on. Yeah. Um DC Thompson just don't really ever have that. They have some fantastic art, but but their writers are at best good. Well, yeah, especially in the seventies, the, the writers were, were people who'd been writing for thirty odd years, and they weren't fresh and right. vibrant like the John and, and Pat were. Now, should we join us? Does anybody have any questions in the audience? Because we've got some some time. They've all left. We can't see. There's nobody there. Yeah, yeah, we can't see. Oh, we can see are these lights. I, actually, if someone has uh, their hand up, we can't see it. So shout out your questions if you've got one. Anybody? Nobody. Speak up. I, I can see if anybody has their hands up. Yeah. No, okay. Fair don't enough, don't I, be shy. Yeah. That's, fine. I, it's, that's, that's fine. I go back to what I was saying earlier where I got distracted. I distracted myself. PJ, what would you pick if you had to pick a different story to do for another? It's, it's tough because I, I sort of, I was a warlord reader. I always think, oh, I know, I know. God. I always think <laughs> it's like there's a kind of, there's a constant dichotomy in childhood, and certainly in the age that I am. Where it was like you were a dandy or a Beano reader, and I was like, I was a dandy reader. You were a Tiz was, or you were a magpie watcher, and I was a magpie watcher. Any of the middle class decisions I would take, any of the more dull ones. So I was war so it'd be uh, Lord Henry Flint or something would have been the, the thing I would go, oh, oh let me do that. Oh, yeah. you know? yeah. Although as I get older, it's like, no, you, you look back and you go, well, oh, that was all a bit weak sauce, really. But it, isn't it Peter Flint? Because oh, Peter Flint, yeah, Peter yeah, yeah. Henry yeah. Flint just drew yeah, that's right. the slave. Yeah. <laughs> 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 to be honest, that's probably the great yeah, yeah, entire right. convention. Right. Lord, Henry yes. Lord Henry Flint. Henry's going to see this and go, yes. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's what I've been aiming for. That idea of a character who was a card on the outside but was actually off performing secret missions, that kind of boyish yeah. Yeah. sort of so so James Bond really soldier Raker. I don't remember it. I don't the remember black, it. The black soldier, the American soldier. Right. I, don't, I don't remember it well. It really good. Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember really Cassidy? Really yeah. Yeah, I did catch some Cassidy. Yeah. yeah, he was he, the United States Marine Corps and he was fighter right. pilot. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Charles Paul uh, Corsair. Yeah, that, he started on Wildcats and he went on to Corsairs. Right, and yeah, I can yeah. now exclusively reveal that when I named a certain character in Preacher and I was thinking of a name, that's where it came from. We thought Cassidy. That's a cool name. Yeah. 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 Well, also, it's right, it uh, gives the connotation to Butch Cassidy. So, you know, well, there's that. that. Yeah. I mean, that's a lot of cool just there with that mm, name. Yeah. So, yeah. But um, I would like to draw anything anyone asks me to draw. That's, that's, <laughs> that's been my, my, my motto all through life. If you pay me, I will do it. Excellent. Yeah. yeah. Well, um, if. Uh, I've been very lucky, though, I should say. I've always got like great writers like Garth and uh, Gordon and, and you, of course. Uh, I, know some <laughs> you, I know some of you wouldn't want to draw. What? Well, the first things I did when I saw it was a girls' comic, and it was about ballroom dancing. Oh. And there were eight, <laughs> there were eight couples, and it was eight frames a page, and there's someone with overhead shots. Now, how would you like to do that? Yes, no. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. I mean, yeah. I mean, it depends on depends no, on how no, close my bills are. <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, there's nothing. Nothing would, would make it worthwhile. Oh, Good training. Yeah. Sure. So, yeah. Mike, if you had to pick a classic character from from the comic, actually from any comic, to bring back, because yeah. let's say let's say this fantasy land, it can be any, even from even from one of the distinguished competition. Sure. Yeah, T.C. Thompson. Yeah. Actually, I, I quite like the Sarge. Actually. Oh, you Mike, you did a lot of work in 2000 AD on on some of the grittier stories like oh, yeah. Invasion yeah, and yeah. Max Zero, which I loved. Oh, um, cool. This sort of thing. Well, would you ever be interested in going back to these? Again? Yeah, I mean, Invasion, I loved it. Bill Savage, that was a really good character. Yeah, yeah it'd be nice and, to do it. And the ABC yeah. words, the Road yeah. Jewels, yeah, the Surge yeah. Robot. Oh, I like you, him. You did uh, Hammerstein's War, Memor War Memoirs, which yes, led to right. the ABC Warriors, which sparked, sparked off a whole yeah. different thing. So, yeah, yeah, yeah that's that was, that's, uh, yeah, but that's. Uh, <laughs> No, I think the soldier do me. Yeah. <laughs> so is he still the soldier? I haven't promoted yet. What's no. next? I might have accidentally demoted him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cool. I, mean, I want to point out now, if you notice this, cool. he's, cool. Missing, cool. he's missing the, oh, the, kind of the crown yeah. that's above. Oh, was it shot off? It was shot off. Sergeant Major. Like, yeah. or he's just, I think that's a Master Sergeant, and I, I for somehow forgot to put that on that. And but he's, he has that in some of the Mike West yeah, that's stuff true, and that's doesn't true. have and it he, in he others. He also has it's, a patch about um, it's his, like his, he the would, invasion force or something, the European something, explorer free force or something, I think they're called. Mur. 
which he has on some it's strips and not. Force, yeah, it's the expeditionary yeah. force, which yeah. he has on some strips. He doesn't have others, yeah. and you're kind of going. I don't know. And but the thing is, when you're doing this stuff, there are books of reference, and you read through. And you look at the photos, and you go, Ah, well, they use this, and they have that, and they use this, and you go, I'll just start doing this. And then you actually read it. And it goes, No, well, what happened? So many people died that they didn't have this yeah. anymore, and then and then the ones that did have yeah. this used to steal their boots from the other ones, who because that was the only equipment they could find. And so it, it becomes a, there is a mismatch, a mismatch of clothing and equipment yeah. and stuff yeah. that they would have yeah. worn in the real you know the real mm. so, which is why there are continuity errors in all of the war stories I know <laughs> <laughs> it's in order to make them more accurate yeah, but some yeah. of the worst things is like they've got shoulder flashes down there yeah. they've got scenes on here and they're like Jesus Christ got, every frame I do I've got to draw some plate with a sort of real sausage fridge with something written up there and so you just, uh, just leave it up. Have you, have we there, was that a, there was a character who used to, I can't remember, he was like a human fly, he would climb up a wall, he was a commando character. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, commando as in the, the soldier. Yeah. Uh, would climb up the wall and, and sort of perform missions that could only be done by, for some reason, climbing up cliffs. It was always... <laughs> that every, sounds familiar. Yeah, yeah there was yeah. always something, no matter what it was, it was, the only way we could solve this is for him to climb up that big cliff. <laughs> and he would climb up cliffs and perform his mission, drop a bomb or whatever and escape. And that's a character that always stuck with me he for some to, reason. Not surprised. Yeah. Well, I think if we, if we were to do, you know, if there were to be more battle actions, we'd have to have letters page so that people could write in with their do you know, I, 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 send, I, send I know someone who did that. Guys. I did that? Yeah. yeah. Uh, to my eternal shame, it's, it's my closest point of contact with uh, Eric Bradbury. Oh, right. Yeah. Uh, and I'm pretty sure I was wrong. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. I've looked at it since, yeah. and uh, and uh, I'm pretty sure I was wrong. But also, like, Eric Bradbury was not only an excellent artist, he was also apparently a rear gunner on Lancasters. Oh, really? so, he knew his stuff. so here's a guy I admire enormously, not yeah. just for his art, but for his, you know, his wartime heroism. Yeah. Because that wasn't a nice job. And uh, that's what I... Did yeah. you know what? What a little no, shit! It's fine. <laughs> a little shit. Um, you know, here's here's a lesson. Take what you're given. <laughs> I, I did point out the all because I was chatting to Oliver, uh, the editor, all the pickles, and somebody had said, "Oh, I," you know, I said, "Well, Oliver wants to do more of this. Garth wants more more of this. I want to." So the thing to do is to write in and say, "We want more of this." Mm. And I said, yeah. "Who do we write into?" And I realized there's no there's no contact details in the book. There's no way to find anyone. He says, email. <laughs> oh, that should go over well. <laughs> Just go straight to the top. Sorry, yeah. Oliver. You had to be the wrong kind of battles in there. It'd all be medieval. But yeah, 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 I mean, if you want, like, if you're enjoying that book, the thing to do is it doesn't matter how you contact them, it was to contact them. Because yeah. they will measure it by sales, but they'll also measure it by response. I mean, they'll yeah, measure yeah. it by. If well, people are excited Jesus, by Oliver, how's life under that bus? <laughs> <laughs> well, we, give, give us a shout, by the way, if anybody has read the new Battle Action special. Yes or no? Yeah. 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 Okay, and, uh, right, that's not enough. Um, <laughs> give me a shout if you're going to read it. Yeah. 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 Oh, God, there's, there's so People put some effort into it. Well, I, I would recommend it very highly. It's, it's tremendously good fun. Um, it's a beautiful it, book. It is, it's, it's a, a beautiful, gorgeous beautiful looking book. book. We don't have the other. There's another edition with a special cover by John Higgins. Right. Um, oh, you may don't go there. Don't go there. Oh, well, that's great. We're not that's allowed great. to go there. You any room and it instantly makes it 70s. <laughs> yeah. It's just, that's yeah. a great cover. Yeah. <laughs> it is a, it's an excellent book. And I'd, uh, it, it, do you remember the days when you were a kid and you get an annual for Christmas? Well, this is the annual. Now, I know it's wild and free, but get someone to buy it for you, put it aside, read it on Christmas, on Christmas morning while you're opening your chocolate orange or train set or whatever it is that people get. What do people get at Christmas? Um, I don't know. Drunk. Yes. <laughs> um, guys, if there's no further questions, I want to let these people get back to their pints and their, and their, and their uh, individual seats. Oh, unless anybody has a, any questions to shout out? No? Okay, I want to thank, well, for, actually, no, first I want to thank Oliver for, for, for putting this thing together. Thanks, thank you very much, Oliver Pickles, you're a genius. Hi, Oliver. Hi, Oliver. Um, I, I'm going to read, quickly read out this of the other creators, I mean, that's the other artists, because someone sadly couldn't be here today, and someone happily couldn't be here today. Um, right, okay, first of all, we mentioned Johnny Red, that's Keith Burns, who is down there, he's awesome. <laughs> Colours by, by uh, Jason Wordy, but we, we don't have him here either. No, mm. no, good. Uh, the Sarge art by Pajolden. Pajolden. I don't know who that is. P. P. J. Holden. Oh, it's okay. Uh, 
Yeah. 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 DJs are so good they didn't even need colours. No. Uh, yeah. 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 Hey, how is that? Um, Crazy Keller was... You can't pull it to turn No, you can't. You can't, yeah. Crazy Keller was drawn by Chris Burnham, who, who I know. So, it's Chris Burnham, awesome guy. Good. 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 Why you went with him, but good. Dredger art by John Higgins oh. and colours by Sally Jane Hurst. Two of my best friends, so there we go. Um, Helmet of Hammer Force art by Mike Dory. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, and everybody has to buy these people drinks, by the way. Um, Kids Will OK art by Kevin O'Neill. Who the hell is he? Yeah. Never well, heard of her. Yeah. <laughs> Kevin, Kevin, absolute legend in comics. And then, the last one, I didn't even mention the name of it yet. When I mentioned it, I spoiled it. Nina Petrova and the Angels of Death, acted by Patrick Goddard and colours by Jason Wardy again. Yeah. And Rob Seen did the lettering for all of these, by the way. So please thank them, yeah. everybody. Um, Nina Petrova is just a brilliant, brilliant piece of work. It should have been done back in the day, but technically there wasn't. Yeah. Um, and of course, we want to thank um, well, everyone behind the scenes at Rebellion and back to the Dave Hunt again, who basically was the inspiration behind all of this. Uh, thank you, Dave, wherever you are, you're over there somewhere. Uh, you're a genius and we love you. Um, guys, I also want to thank um, Paul Trimble for putting this together. Yeah. You're a genius. Um, and thanks to all the team, thanks to all the, the staff, and somebody stopped me. <laughs> we should we should probably also thank uh, Tom Tully, Joe Calhoun, John oh, yeah. Cooper, of course. Uh, yeah, Pat Pat Mike Story, yeah, Jerry yeah, Finley yeah, Day, yeah, Alan yeah. Hebden, Eric Bradbury, Chris Lauder, Mike White, had these all written down, didn't Pat you? Mills, John yeah. Wagner, yeah. have Steve I, McManus. Steve McManus, Horatio Mike Western, yeah. 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 all yeah. those guys who created the original battle and action to yeah. give us such a great comic all those years ago. Absolutely. Yeah. Think, think yeah. nothing of it. <laughs> 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 <laughs>